Good afternoon, everyone. We continue our study in the book of Judges, and we're now in chapter 18. And as I had described this last section from chapter 17 onwards, um, many things that the, these are chapters which were, which had occurred much earlier. And now it is actually relegated to the end of the book of Judges so that it does not interrupt the flow of the recording of the history in the book of Judges. And as we progress, then we will be able to tell some of the hints uh, in these chapters why uh, some people think that they are in the earlier uh, stages of the history of Israel. In chapter 18, we continue from chapter 17, which was about Micah, and he had actually installed a silver molten image idol in his house. And he found a Levite to be his priest. In chapter 18, it says, in the days and in those days there was no king in Israel. So it's before Saul, David, and Solomon. And the reason why it was expressed that way is it's very likely that had there been a king, it is probably not possible for this to happen. So it was in a day where there's no absolute figure that was over all the 12 tribes. And then it says that, uh, and in those days, the tribe of Dan was seeking an inheritance. And everything about inheritance is about land. For itself to dwell in. For until that day, their inheritance among the tribes of Israel had not fallen to them. Now we need to understand that Back in the book of Joshua, we could see that they were given land in the book of Joshua. And this would have been recorded in, I guess you could say, Joshua chapter 19. And this would be in verses 47 until 48. Now, Joshua chapter 19, verses 47 and 48. Let me just read that to you. Joshua 19, verse 47 reads, And the border of the children of Dan went beyond these, because the children of Dan went up to fight against Leshem and took it. Now this passage tells us that uh, they went, to fight, and that would be to the north and to the highlands, to a place called Lashem. And they took it, and they struck it with the edge of the sword, took possessions of it, and dwelt in it. They call Lashem Dan, after the name of Dan, their father. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families, these cities, and with their villages. What I am trying to point out to you uh, is that before they had inheritance, which is land, among the tribes of Israel, it's not that they don't have land. They had a place either they outgrew it, or they couldn't conquer it. And so they were dwelling amongst the tribe of Judah. Now, we, as we go through chapter 18, you'll find that Dan had that problem. Moving here and there, and they were living in camps, no cities. And they were living a little south of Jerusalem. Now, what is important for us to realize that in chapter 18, verse 1, was to talk about, number one, there was no king in Israel, and number two, they were looking for a more permanent land to dwell in. At this point in time, they were living among the tribes of Israel, 
whether in Judah or in Ephraim. And so why were they not given land? They were given land. And remember, in the book of Joshua, the land that each of them were given, they have to go and fight. Uh, and whether Dan fought or could not fight or ran out of place, we don't really know. But they were moving around. So the children of Dan sent five men of the family from their territory, men of valor, very bold and brave heroes. Uh, and they went from uh, Zora and Eshtaol. There are two places there. And then they went to spy out the land. So they're looking for a land. So this word spy is to uh, explore. Now, this word actually is to go out and, and check the place and come and tell the leaders of the tribe of Dan about it. This is what the word spy means. There is another meaning for spy, and it comes from the word slander. It is to tell tales. And this word spy literally says he will, they will go out, check out the place and come back and tell tales of the land and explore it. They said to them, go search the land. And so they went to the mountains of Ephraim. Remember, they were in, let, let's say if this was Jerusalem. They were down south. They went. They went up north and then to Ephraim. And then they went all the way up north to a place called Laish. And we'll read about that shortly. And so they came to Ephraim and came to the house of Micah. Let's say we have Micah here. Micah is from Ephraim, and we read this in chapter 17, and he, he had some money, and the mother wanted him to make an idol. And so it came to the house of Micah, and they stayed there. And while they were at the house of Micah, the five persons recognized the voice of a young Levite. They turned aside and said to him, Who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? What do you have here? And so this young man, a Levite, said, Thus and so Micah did for me. And so he related the story. He has hired me and I have become his priest. Now this is a personal thing in the house of Micah for Micah. So they said to him, Please inquire of God that we may know whether the journey on which we go will be prosperous. Think of it this way. Please inquire of Elohim. And because he was wearing an ephod, uh, they thought that he was able to inquire of the Urim and Tumim. These would be the two stones that the high priest would use to seek answers from God. And when the tribe of Dan came to this young man, the Levi, he was wearing such a robe because he was mimicking the high priest robe. And so the God of the Elohim was that molten image. And they said, can you check with him whether... We will be successful. This word prosperous is successful. I guess in the way that most Orientals go, when they are superstitious, they will check with anyone of a higher power. And so the priest then said to them, go in peace, walk with shalom. And it says the presence or the, well, this word is, uh, is 
it's not quite the presence. It literally says that the Lord will be in front. The Lord will be in front as you walk on your way. And so that little molten image in chapter 17 is treated as Jehovah because that is what Micah told uh, this priest. And so this Jehovah will be in front of you. And so you will be fine. Verse 7, so the five men depart departed and went to Laish. Remember, Laish is way up north. When we contend, and so let me just put it here. When we check with Joshua, chapter 19, and in verse 47, you find that the place is called Lashem. And we will deal with this uh, towards the end of this chapter, but understand that it is the same place, just a, a different name. The original name is Laish. And then they saw that the people who were there, they were dwelling safely. They had walls. Uh, they lived like the Sidonians. They were quiet and secure. They were not disturbing people. There were no kings in the land who might put them to shame for anything, which means that there are no enemies around them to want their place. They were far from the Sidonians and they had no ties, no relationship, which also means no one to call for help. Verse 8. Then the spies came back to their brethren at Zorah and Eshtaol and said to the brethren, he says, uh, and the brethren asked, what, what do you say now? You've gone out, you have spied the place, explored, tell me about it. So verse 9 comes and says, and so they said, arise, let us go up against them. Who is them? The people in Laish. That's the recommendation. For we have seen the land, and indeed it was very good. Verse 9, it says, very good, just like in Genesis chapter 1, when God saw that everything he made was very good. So they saw this land, and it, it has everything. Everything complements each other. Would you do nothing? Don't hesitate to go. Let's go and conquer the land. When you go, you will come to a secure people and a large land, for God has given it into your hands. Now, this is their way of speaking. For Elohim has given it into your hands. How would they know? They don't. They just made it up. A place where there's no lack of anything that is on the land. Now, verse 11 then tells us 600 men from the family of Dan went up from there, from Zorah and Eshtaol, armed with weapons of war. Now remember, these people were quiet and secure. They don't fight anyone and, and obviously they, they don't have a, uh, instruments of war. And so they went up and encamped at Kiryat Yaarim in Judah. Now, if you're not familiar, this place is also referred to in 1 Samuel that this is where the, the Ark of the Covenant stayed for 20 years. The Ark of the Covenant. After they took it back from the Philistines, they had it stored there for 20 years in Kiryat Yaarim. And it's in Judah. And as they encamped there, they called that place Mahane Dan to this day. There it is west of Kiryat Yaarim. So what does that mean? We have Kiryat 
Ya'arim. And what they did was they had camps. Their camps is west of Kiryat Ya'arim. And this is the camp of Dan. The word Mahane is camp. A group of tents. And they passed from there to the mountains of Ephraim and came to the house of Nika. And so what they did was they went up and they came to Nika. They are supposed to go all the way up to Laish. And so they came to Mika for a stopover. Verse 14. And then the five men who had gone to spy out the country of Laish answered and said to their brethren, Do you know that they are in these houses and effort a household of idols? These are the Teraphim, so I just put it here, Teraphim. And then a carved image and a molded image. I, I would say that this is one of the same thing, the carved image and a molded image. This is the silver idol. And now, therefore, consider what you should do. Verse 15, And then they turned aside there and came to the house of the young Levite man, to the house of Micah, and greeted him. So this Levite man is actually the priest of Micah. The 600 men armed with their weapons of war who were of the children of Dan stood by the entrance of the gate. Then the five men who had gone to spy out the land went up, entering there. They took the carved image, the ephod, the household idols, the molded image. Basically, they cleared out that Mika's little temple. The priest stood at the entrance of the gate with the 600 men who were armed with weapons of war. When these men went into Mika's house, took the calf image, the ephod, and the household idols, and the molded image, the priest said to them, What are you doing? This is a raid on Mika's house. Verse 19. Verse 19 says, And then they said to him, Be quiet. Now this word, be quiet, is to be be silent. But essentially is to be deaf. This is the word to be deaf. Because a deaf person is to be silent. They don't hear anything. Right? They don't hear anything. Put your hand over your mouth and don't speak. And come with us. Be a father and a priest to us. And that in itself is the call that Micah gave to this young man. And then these people from dances, now you be a priest to us. Isn't it better for you to be a priest to the household of one man or that you be a priest to a tribe and a family in Israel? And that would be the tribe of Dan. So the priest's heart was glad. Wow, this would be a promotion from a one household to an entire tribe. And so he took the ephod, the household idols, the carved image, and took his place among the people. So you notice that this molded image is no longer described, but they are one and the same. Verse 21, and then they turned and departed and put the little ones, the livestock and the goods in front of them. 
when they were a good way from the house of Mika, the men who were in the houses near Mika's house gathered together and overtook the children of Dan. Now, these were the men of Mika. And they called out to the children of Dan. So they turned around and said to Mika, and these were the men. Mika came with men. And verse 23 basically tells us this. It says, what is it with you? Now, this word, what ails you, uh, basically is, is what? Or why? We don't have that equivalent in English. It's just an exclamation. What is this? That you have gathered such a large number of people. And verse 24 and then he said, You have taken away my Elohim, which I made the silver molded image, and the priest that I hired, and you have gone away. Now, what more do I have? Nothing. How can you say to me, What? Or why are you here? Now, this, these are comments made by the people of Dan. And, and basically, it's telling Mika, why are you chasing us? What for? Verse 25. In reply to Mika. That basically, it's a reply to Mika. The children of Dan said to him, Do not let your voice be heard among us. This is trying to warn Mika. Because there were some men in this group of 600 that is a bit temperamental. Because some of them and in verse 25, some of them could be bitter or could be, well, I guess you can say discontented. I guess the picture that I think we can have here is that there are some men among the 600 of the men of Dan that could react to Mika. And when they react to Mika, it says you will lose your life and the lives of your household. It says don't make any more noise. With that warning, in verse 26, and then the children of Dan went their way and then when Mika saw that they were too strong for him, now obviously Mika cannot fight these 600 people, he turned and went back to his house. Now what we are told up to this point in time is that Mika has lost his little gods, the silver god, idol, and the priest. And he has lost his dignity because it was robbed of him from his house. Verse 27, we now come to the last part. What did they do as they went up to Lakish? So they took the things that Mika made, the priests who had belonged to him, and they went up to Laish, that's this place, to a people quiet and secure. They are very peaceful. And they struck them with the edge of the sword and then burned the city with fire. So now you can see how this story works. They took and, and then they went to Laish. And then 
So you notice the Hebrew expression, this and is not an and then, it's just a mere conjunction that they are very peaceful people in two different contexts, quiet and secure. And then they struck them with the edge of the sword. And this is a conjunction and burned the city with fire. There was no deliverer, no one there to rescue because it was too far away from Sidon. And they had no ties with anyone. They had no treaty. They had no relationships with the, the, the neighboring nations. It was in the valley that belongs to Bet uh, Rechof. And so they rebuilt the city and dwelt there. Now this word they is Dan. And it talks about rebuilding. Why? Because they had burnt down the city. Now in the past, what happens is that when they come to a place and if they were houses, they will burn it down to the ground and it would just be stubbles. And what they did was they filled it up with soil and then they will build on top. They will build on top again. And this is how their houses would have been. On top of the ones that they have burned to the ground. Now we can see this because all across the land of Israel, even today, we can see tells. There will be layers, right? Layers. And each layer would be one time that they would have destroyed and burned down. They would fill it up with, land, with soil and they would build on top of it. And that's what it means by rebuild here. They rebuilt the city and dwelt there. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan, their father, who was born in Israel. However, the name of the city formerly was Laish. Now, this word formerly is originally. Laish is the name. But in Joshua, Chapter 19, verse 47, it is Leishem. Now, this idea in Joshua 19, 47, gives us the name Leishem. Now, Leishem has a meaning. Uh, the meaning of Leishem is actually a precious stone, turquoise. Now, this stone is also representative of the tribe of Dan. And possibly in Joshua chapter 19, verse 47, when it was called uh, Leishem. Leishem uh, is likely to use the stone as a representation of the city. But the original name is Laish. And now it's changed to Dan. Now, it is very interesting from here on that you should find that Dan will be the most northern city uh, of the land of Israel. And oftentimes you would hear of the description from Dan to Beer Shiva, which would be down south, right? Beer Shiva. And that is the southern tip of the tribe of Judah. And so that would be describing from north to south. And so Dan to Beshiva would be the way that it will be commonly expressed from the book of 1 Samuel onwards. And so in the book of Judges chapter 18, we read now of the history of how 
Laish got its name, how Dan got there, right? That would be a good way of understanding that from here on, every time you hear from Dan to Beersheba, this had already happened. And this must have happened sometime in the book of Joshua. We come to verse 30 and 31. So we'll see this. And then, the children of Dan set up for themselves the carved image and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of, and now we need to deal with this word. It is not Manasseh. Now remember, at this point in time, we're talking about the role of this, this priest who came to join Dan. And his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land. And so we need to very carefully, I'll just want to explain to you why this is not Manasseh, the son of Joseph, but this is actually Moshe. The son of Moses. The son of Moses. Now, this word is actually written this way. Now, this is a very odd way of writing. This is pronounced as Manashe. Right, Menashe. But there is this little letter which is a known, and it seems to be just sitting on top there as a minor letter inserted into the word Moshe. These letters represent Moses. But it is called Menashe, not Manasseh, Manashe, but Menashe, as perhaps a way of hiding the name of Moses, perhaps. Why? Because Gershom, uh, and you could see this in Exodus chapter 20, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Verses 21 to 22, you find that Gershom is the eldest son of Moses, which does not appear again until here in Judges chapter 18. And Jonathan is his son. And so understand, Moses is from the tribe of Levi. And so this young Levite is Jonathan who was actually taking the role of the priest of Nikah. And now he and his sons continued as priests for the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity of the land by the Assyrians. And so this word Manashe is actually Moshe, Moses. Uh, and we can't see this in the English. We have to see this in the Hebrew. So at least now you have a better picture. Who is this Gershom? Gershom is also the name of the son of Levi. And oftentimes in the Hebrew Bible, when the name is a nice name, they keep using the name. So we have to really track who is the father. And then you will know that this is a son of the father. And this, by the Hebrew writing, would be Moses. And so they set up for themselves Nika's carved image. And it's also the molten image, which is silver, which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. This is another indication. Uh, that the house of God, the tabernacle was in Shiloh for 
some 390 years. And this was actually placed in Dan for a long, long time. When the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle was in Shiloh, the molten image was already in Dan. Now, I had a chance to travel to Dan, and the ruins actually somehow portrays a space uh, that was a, 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 a location that is very likely where the idol was placed in the city of Dan. And the city of Dan is way, way up north. And around the city of Dan were a lot of what we call little altars for idols, including this most likely place for this silver molten carved image inside the city of Dan. And so with this, we come to the end of our session today.